السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته هلا والله هلا وغلا ورمضان كريم رمضان مبارك peace and love big house and Anna Scofield we are gonna be taking over your radio in this new timing right now from 4 to 6 p.m. يا الله يا الله رمضان is always emotional to me um, for many reasons and I want to shout out everybody that you know wished uh, wished me a, a blessed Ramadan I want to shout out I'm, I'm in the UEE right now and obviously I moved here three years and a half ago and um, it's, 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 it's my new home you know Saudi Arabia in Ramadan is different customs different vibe different energy with the UEE ha- being a place open place for 200 plus nationalities uh, you feel you feel there's a sense of uh, um, I'm gonna mess up the word right here. Com- camaraderie, if that's the word, with with people who are not fasting, we're non-Muslims. You know, there's a lot of people who are non-Muslim in the UAE and they're not fasting, and and they feel you and they get you, and this is all all um, just incredible. We we, we want to take you on a journey, hopefully today, and we want to make it as easy as possible and as smooth as possible. Um, you know, be, because it's very really really important. Obviously, if our timings today are around 6:40 p.m. Um, and our show is from 4 to 6 p.m. So we want to try to make this journey as smooth and um, as easy and as enjoyable as possible. We're going to talk about Andrea Bocelli uh, in Saudi Arabia. We're going to talk about Ramadan a lot. Um, I want to talk to you guys about the Banksy situation. Obviously, there's this mall in the UAE over here that, that are displaying his work. And they're kind of under attack because Banksy doesn't really commercialize his work. It's really interesting. I mean, let's let's talk about it and have this conversation about it. But the, the, the Zubda and the, and the whole focus um, today and for the rest of this holy month is definitely Ramadan. I personally want to reflect. I want to be definitely closer to God. Um, may Allah bless you. May Allah protect you, protect your family, uh, protect your loved ones. Make this month easy with everything that is going on. I think it's time for us to uh, slow down. And I am getting emotional. I am emotional today. I've been emotional. And... Uh, if you're able to help out other people who are in need, my dear brother and sister, please do so. Please try to help. Um, Ramadan is that month. I was saying yesterday, maybe try to use that as an excuse to start that and let that be your lifestyle. If you are only able to do so and if you're only able um, you know, you know, to help. It's going to be an incredible, incredible show. Me and Anna Scofield, both of us are, uh, of course, the, the duo that never gets separated. Yellow Home. Anna Schofield and Big Hass. Pulse95 Radio, Yellow Home, Big Hass and Anna Schofield. Um, she's madly stuck in that, that, in that Ramadan traffic right now, but she's on her way. God bless. This is incredible. Um, you know, Ramadan is, uh, for me, I, like I said earlier, I, we, I get really emotional. So for a lot of people that might be tuning in, um, I, for one, and again, this is me personally as Hassan, that's how I do my, 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 my daily thing. And I, I always welcome people to ask questions about Ramadan and it's okay to ask questions, you know, even like, don't be ashamed, ma'am, ma'am, there, there's, there's not a problem, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, because if it's something that you don't know, it's okay to ask. It's not, um, it's not like something, you know, not right. Anyway, millions of Muslims around the world, you know, um, you know, Islam is you know, one, two billion people religion. So a lot of people obviously, you know, uh, celebrate the start of the, of this holy month. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine from Indonesia yesterday and Indonesia is the highest populated Muslim, um, population in the world. And he was telling me like, it's, it's just, you know, it's a festival that involves obviously fasting. Believer, believers taking part will not eat or drink anything during the daylight hours um, and prayer. This is what Ramadan. Ramadan is the, of course, um, Arabic name for the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. It's considered one of the holiest Islamic months. And it's also one of the five pillars of Islam. We have five pillars in Islam. Um, these are five principles which Muslims, of course, believe um, are compulsory acts ordered by Allah. Um, Muslims believe that some of the, you know, obviously f- uh, first verses of the Islamic holy book, the Quran, were revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during the month of Ramadan. And, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it, a lot of people ask, how does it work? Well, Muslims have an early morning, uh, somehow meal before dawn, known as suhoor. Um, and you know, they, they break their fast after sunset uh, for the evening meal called iftar or fatur. Uh, or some people call it breakfast. But yeah, technically the, 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 the exact translation for that is breakfast. So, um, and 
Ramadan, yeah, Ramadan is that time, you guys. Ramadan is a time where Muslims are encouraged to give to charity, strengthen their relationship with God, um, show kindness and patience. Um, but that's why I say, I'm like, this is not only characteristics that you should show only in Ramadan and then the, the, la- the other 11 months, like you go back to whatever. Um, you know, and I think it's, uh, it's really important. During Ramadan as well, you guys, um, there's this, uh, you know, um, very, very incredible tradition um, that, that we go to mosque to pray Taraweeh. This is only, of course, held in Ramadan. And of course, with everything that's going on with uh, COVID-19, the, the prayer itself is done in a social distant, um, you know, way. Um, this is the second Ramadan to fall, um, you know, under the COVID uh, coronavirus pandemic. Um, for Muslims around the world, um, this means just, you know, a year of a lot of changes, especially in traditional practices. Um, and when people say iftar, what is iftar? Well, you know, it depends on everyone. I personally like to have a, a light iftar and then, you know, uh, pray um, and then come back and kind of finish the meal. <laughs> uh, but again, everyone, everyone, everyone deals with it differently. You know what's interesting? Just to talk to the, it's just it, every everybody deals with it differently. And even us Muslims deal with it differently. And that's why I'm asking you guys right now. I'm having an open conversation with you, you guys, the listeners. 4215, it's a lot. And do any question, don't be shy. No need to message your name. Just send me any question on that line. The text lines are open. 4215, it's a lot. And do. And you'll be able to ask any question you want, anything at all, really. I will answer anything that I know, of course. I'm not a scholar, I'm just a human being, um, you know, that obviously is, is, is fasting. And it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling today. Um, and I was telling Anna, like, the first couple of days, the two, three days are a bit difficult. So, yeah, I am in that mood right now. Um, and, uh, you know, it is uh, the way it is. For me, Ramadan is about family. I, um, I miss my dad. My dad passed away um, like 15 years ago. And uh, Ramadan is that month where I miss him the most. Um, my mom, I'm away from my mom, my brother, and my sister. And uh, everyone's working and everyone... Ramadan is really family. Um, and it's all about that. Um, it Really, that's it. Ramadan equal family. Ramadan equal be able to give back. Ramadan is, um, is that month where you know, you realize, and you say, Alhamdulillah, that I'm okay. I'm able to eat. I have a roof on top of my head and uh, that's the beautiful thing I know I'm getting a bit emotional but again I just want to get out of my system so that we can talk later about things that are happening um, but it's important to celebrate that especially in the country like the UAE where I want to shout out the Sharjah Broadcast Authority and Pulse 95 Radio being the first English radio station in Sharjah and we're very very honored I'm very honored to be here from the start me and Anna and, and, and others we've been here from the start and uh, it's just really incredible to see how everyone is celebrating Ramadan, dealing with Ramadan in, 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 in their own different way. Um, now, what's really interesting and very important for you guys to know as well, n- if people can't fast, it's not also compulsory. Like, you know, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah ar-Rahim. Allah is the merciful. So um, it's not like fasting should only be done by people who are in good health. Those who are sick or ill, and can be impacted by, by fasting, no need. Children, although some may begin practice from the young age, but also children are not, that they don't have to. Travelers, people who are traveling, pregnant and, and breastfeeding women. These are all, you know, things and scenarios that God, Allah has given us. And, and, and it's, it's all about mercy. And that's why I always say on the show here, and even before I joined Pulse 95 Radio, Islam is about peace. This is Islam, it's taken from Salam. It's, it's peace. And what a beautiful religion. And, 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 and alhamdulillah, what a, what a beautiful blessing to be a Muslim. And, and a beautiful, beautiful time, really. Um, alhamdulillah, always for everything. I hope, I hope that my, my, my small monologue right now made you feel whatever it is that you're feeling, but it's okay to be with your feelings right now. And it's okay to be, you know, just emotional. It's okay to feel anything right now. Uh, and if you're stuck in traffic and you're like, wow, this guy is really calm. He's sitting in, a, in, a, in an AC situation and he's talking, it's all good. You know, you're going to, inshallah, you're going to reach wherever you're reaching, to your family, to your workplace, wherever you're going. Bis salama, that's the most important thing. So calm down, relax, and enjoy the incredible music, that special music that we play, of course, 
in in um, in doing Ramadan. This is one of my favorite songs I'm about to play. Uh, Maher Zain is one of my favorite artists. I've met him four or five times. The song is called Medina. It's his daughter in the beginning. And of course, he's talking about one of the whole, two holy cities, Mecca and Medina. He's talking about Medina here. Beautiful record and a beautiful track. We're going to be right back. Pulse 95 Radio. It's Yella Home. It's Yella Home. With Anna Schofield. And Big Hass. Pulse. It is. Uh, big house and Anna Schofield um, Anna's stuck in that track God bless her Okay um, So let's say everybody tuning in And uh, bless Ramadan The first day of Ramadan I just love this music I believe Yanis made this music Our incredible, incredible, legendary Just genius From Selfit Just Man, just let, Let's take a moment to appreciate the music this. Yeah, salam alaykum yeah. Been doing this thing for over 30 years, I believe I don't want to make you old, brother, but you know what I mean. Let's talk about the 31st edition of Sharjah Ramadan Festival launched, of course. Um, the event will feature offers, vouchers worth 50,000 dirham and many prizes worth up to 3 million dirham, 3 million dirhams. The new season of the Sharjah Ramadan Festival will run from April 13th, i.e. tonight, today, to May 15th under the theme Ramadan coming with valuable prizes. Ya yeah, salam. Beautiful. And I mean, that's the energy and that's the vibe. Um, which is just incredible. A number of shopping malls and retail stores in Sharjah will take part in the event through, of course, you know, the provision of attractive deals and exciting discounts. We'll also provide Sharjah's residents and visitors with a unique experience during the holy month by launching, um, you know, competitive promotions at huge discounts. In addition to organizing raffles on luxury cars, um, weekly vouchers worth 50,000 dirhams and many prices actually worth up to three million um, dirhams which is I love that um, what else do they have um, commenting on the launch actually uh, the chairman of the SCCI uh, Mr. Abdullah Sultan al said over the last three decades the Sharjah Ramadan festival has not only become one of the most favorite shopping events across the region but also a preferred destination for enjoying outstanding entertainment events and spending memorable or memorable memorable and it's going to say something about that. Times with family and friends. It's all about the quality and the diversity. Um, just incredible, you guys. Launching, of course, today. And uh, the assistant uh, general coordinator in SRF, Hannah Swedi, uh, urged those wishing to participate to register with the chamber without delay so you can get the most out of the facility, which is really incredible. I'll tell you more about it, um, you know, throughout, uh, throughout the rest of the show. It's Yella Home. It's Yella Home. With Anna Schofield and Big Hass. Um, we are live through till 6 o'clock tonight. Ramadan Kareem, everybody. It's a very special day. You're so buoyant and happy, Hass. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Blessed and peace. And, you know, so how are you doing, Anna? You good? Well, <laughs> you I'm good. good. <laughs> but how are you, are you good? I mean, I'm great. I feel, I feel great. So far, it's good. So far, the this is the best first day I've had in like three, four years, maybe. Okay, I feel, I, feel I, I don't know. I think oh. it's... Um, I, uh, you know, I was saying in the beginning, I'm, I'm a bit emotional. Um, I, I don't that. know, maybe that is helping. Ramadan <laughs> for me is all about that. And I think it's just really, um, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic time, really, to be, uh, it's a blessed time to be a, a Muslim. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, are in the UAE that don't, you know, obviously fast. And I was saying there's a lot of, camaraderie and like a lot of people are mm. like wishing you know people yeah. like you know you know they, they don't, like they're not fasting but at the same time they're feeling yeah so i get it and maybe it's cool and i just want to kind of feel I'm, I'm, i feel blessed i i feel i feel good alhamdulillah you know a couple of years ago god gave me a big test and now i'm good so yeah and a lot of things are here. this is really good i just want to say on the back of that actually mm-hmm. i went home yesterday um obviously with you with you and my ear going that you know people had said to you yesterday about the um the screens and the curtains not being up in uh, some yeah. emirates yeah and um we'd had that discussion and i said well i don't know how, how i feel because i want to support and um you were saying no all of my expat friends were happy about it mm. um not what i well i had few messages from friends oh, nice. yesterday and all of them went no, I feel weird about that too. The very mm. least we are in their country, the very least we can do is sit behind a screen. And, and I was I was really pleased because I yeah. thought, oh, I, I want everyone yeah. to have that level. So it's crazy because from, from what I've seen, and I mean, I mean, the UAE wouldn't do something like that unless they've done a survey for it. Exactly. So yes, the survey right, yeah. apparently showed like, you know, there is some people, people that... And I'm sure and, they and do. And it's all good, yeah. And it's all good. Like, I, But it... it I think it's an interesting topic to have anyway. You know, it's us oldies, the diehards, the 11 years maybe, yeah. who have done yeah, the 10 yeah. years yeah. with the screens are going, yeah. I don't know whether I want to break this tradition. <laughs> this yeah. is what makes it special. Facts, anyway. facts. Um, and I'm sure you heard about this Banksy uh, kind of... Um, I have. 
but but there's a lot of back and forth in it and without getting into too much details obviously Banksy is like you know there's this world of Banksy experience has launched in in, in the UAE the thing is mm. I, I was in the mall today and I had a couple of discussion with the guys that work there excellent they're getting, so you but they're getting a lot of heat on their social media because you don't know what was it, was it something that um, Banksy approved? Because Banksy is an artist for the people. Would he have charged tickets? Yeah, are you no, guys, I don't think he's ever done that before. Yeah, are you guys it? paying Banksy? Because, like, no one knows who Banksy is. Right. And how, how Did he supply? Did he the, supply these things? You know content? what I mean? Yeah. It's just, and they did, the, they posted this um, ad yesterday, and the, the amount of heat they're getting. Oh. Yeah, from people who are here in the UAE. They're yeah. saying, hey, I'm an artist. I know Banksy. Like, this is, I know of Banksy, but Banksy wouldn't do something like that. I just think it's really, it's 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 interesting, mm. but also um, you know, Banksy is such an incredible artist, and for people who maybe who are young, they, it's it's a good chance to go and find out more, um, you know, about him. Uh, there's around 120 recreated pieces, yeah, um, you know, that he's done, and uh, I'm just saying it's running until June 30th, so that's a lot of time to run as well, like that, you know. And the tickets are actually, like I said, 75 dirhams for adults, 45 dirhams for 12. And then there's a VIP kind of pass that has 110. So, uh, Dirham. And Until you phrased it like that, mm. I, didn't, I hadn't really thought of that. It isn't Banksy's MO. I wonder no. if... But he probably would be very, very interested in this region. You know what a political character he is. Yeah. And I imagine that he would, he would be interested in this region. But would he do it with something like... That's what I'm saying, commercially like that. Show. It's the world's yeah. largest Banksy exhibition. The world's oh. largest... You know, and, and and this is why. So I don't know. I'm trying. I'm, but I really tried to get in touch with the with the PR in the mall yeah. just to see if I can get even information about it because we're not about. We don't want to say false information, so that's no, why we're not even right. saying that. You can Google and we'll find it in the name of the mall. But I'm just saying it's it, it's very interesting. You know, it's 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 daily. Um, it's from noon to midnight on level uh, in one of the levels, and it's just. You know, uh, mm-hmm. visitors are given no set time as well and can spend as much time in the world of Banksy. Um, it's like a thousand square meter and you, you can do this. You can buy the tickets online and just be there and, and get kind of immersed in that experience of Banksy. See, it is an incredible thing. It is an incredible and thing I want to, to find to, out. I want to go. I want to mm. take the children. Oh, yeah. we talk about it, you know. And, and it, it's, it's just the, uh, obviously you think about it from the mentality of like, but Banksy wouldn't. So okay. are you guys using Banksy's name to get money? That's one. Or are you guys really legit in terms of that? That's the discussion right now. And again, you don't know. Everything is about intention. Controversial. It is controversial. And, <laughs> and, and the comments are online. Right. Like some of the comments that we can read are crazy. And they're very factual. Like they're very facts. Banksy wouldn't maybe do something like that. There was no, there was, there was no official statement from Banksy saying that, hey... That you, so does you know? actually tell a story because mm. I'm sure if he was anti it, he would come out and say, I didn't approve that. Maybe he doesn't so, even know. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's Banksy. Like the guy is I'm sure someone's approached him how? about it. Happening. Who knows who he is? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just a very interested. So that's why I'm kind of throwing it out in the world right now. Maybe right. someone that knows Banksy that we know, me and you, like yo, Banksy, yo, they're putting the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> in the UAE, let's do something about it. Yo. <laughs> I heard it from this guy called Big House and Anna Schofield. <laughs> He's like, who knows? L- let's give them the interview and break my- and-, and-, and reveal to the world who yeah. I am. We would totally break the internet with that. <laughs> let's make that happen. We will become so famous. So famous. That I can request 10 times my salary right here and they'll give it to uh, me. You've just monetized Banksy. <laughs> That's yeah, it. No, you can't monetize Banksy. No, I mean, when you run an interview like that, fam, of course. No, but we would have to monetize. say no. No. Because if when we you are do- running with morals. When you're running an interview, like that we got him of course you have to monetize that not monetize the interview monetize the fact that we got him you know no, when you, but that's it's like exactly, getting a promotion that's just exactly the, the, the no, thing that we're in talking this case, about no it's not the same here mm. you, if, if Banksy doesn't know about this and we're saying if we don't know yet yeah, we like, don't know. shout out to that mall of course we all love it but I'm saying if Banksy doesn't know about it that's that's commercialism that's stealing like that's not that's using the name for now with us what I said I'm just jokingly saying if we manage to get an interview with Oprah right now or Eminem oh, I'd be so I would fine think, I would think it would be great you know? yeah but because Oprah has no more I mean, that woman, uh, she's... She, don't no, say no. that, fam. Come on, well, it's the first day of Ramadan. She's zero. She is incredible. She's done a lot of things. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just that she very much is, is very um, commercially <laughs> focused, is a good way to put it. I mean, she's she a TV, you she's know? Doing. She is a legend, though. She's a legend. Like, you know? She's a legend. <laughs> I do admit all of those things. But in terms yeah. of making money from Oprah, Oprah would be spinning it in all sections. So that's completely cool. Yeah, maybe. Someone like Banksy, you might have to 
honor it um, because he's so um, yeah, ethical. Yeah, no, it's not that. It's I was talking about here. Like, they will value us more they since w- the, we were becoming the first people on earth, on this face of the earth, yeah. right, yeah. to bring Banksy. But in the Let's case of that. the mall, they're using their name to use it. What if someone used your name and you don't know about it and they're making money from it? Okay, That's so here's right. a different thing. Maybe they bought it all. If they mm. bought all of those items mm. and then did a, okay, now you can see what we've bought. Actually, Could those be. items belong I, to them. I just wish and hope they they go out and say something because they haven't, the only thing they're saying, it's like, you know, it's just that. It's like 120 recreated Banksy pieces. Recreated. They keep focusing on that word uh, on display. Oh, recreated. So, so they're not the originals. I don't know. See, that's why we can't say about it. So we don't know wow. the details of it, which is very interesting to wow. me how it is. But the fact of the matter that if you Google it and go and check it out, it's definitely an experience because knowing Banksy, knowing what he stands for, yeah. what he's able to do, all his yeah. artwork is phenomenal. We are approaching 5 o'clock, you guys, of course, from 4 to 6 p.m. We're going to be right back. Leaving with Jordanian Palestinian singer-songwriter um, Zen, who launched her first record called Mini Anna. We played it last week. Incredible record. And, uh, um, you know, she's talking about anxiety in this record, and she chose to sing in Arabic in this record. I'm so proud of her. Uh, she was in the UAE a couple of days. I met her. She's an amazing human. It's Yellow Home. It's Yellow Home. With Anna Schofield. And Big Cass. Uh, and we especially would like to hear from you tonight. It's a very special day. 4215, if you want to text us. And I heard Hass earlier saying, you know, if you've got a question, um, speak it. Well, you know, say it out loud. Uh, the one thing I will say is about everyone here. I was talking to someone else this morning in a meeting about it. Everyone here at Pulse95 is great with me. I've asked every question that I've ever had a thought of. And it's been answered. Not once did anyone go, what? You know, you've been fantastic. And so, actually, I feel quite um, I feel quite knowledgeable going into this one because I've had three years already. Uh, but mm. if you have got a question, doesn't matter where you're from. If you want to know something, Big Hass is your guy, 4215. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm your guy. But again, not from a scholar point of view. I just want to answer you from a human being who happens to be yeah. Muslim and who happened to fast. But what's interesting, Anna, is that they're saying that fasting in the UE is to last over 14 hours. Um, the, the, this year in the National Center of Meteorology and just preparing you guys 14 hours and 2 minutes um, th- this is how approximately will be and the more interesting fact is that they're actually saying that the temperature could soar up to 48 degrees Celsius during the holy month of Ramadan oh, I'm telling you we, 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 when we get tested we get tested we don't yeah. mess around <laughs> get tested right I like it I there like you it. go deal with that I like it exactly oh, you? You know, you like yeah it? of course because I think you know it's, if you're in Ramadan and all you're doing is sleeping 25 hours a day or whatever it is like you know you're sleeping all the time you're being lazy you're using Ramadan as an excuse especially for the non-Muslims when they see you they're going to take a bad idea by you I just want to try to talk to you my brother and sister because I know some of you exist I know you I know you and I wish I can say your names you holding Ramadan <laughs> Ramadan wow. as an excuse is not right. That's not Ramadan. That that's wrong. Uh, you you could be feeling tired. You could be feeling, but never put it. You know, it's Ramadan. I'm tired. Never put Ramadan as an excuse. Never do that. Uh, um, for many reasons, obviously. The reason I can think about right now is. You know, even if, if non-Muslims would see you, that is a bad representation of what Ramadan. They wouldn't take it the right way. They'd be like, oh, this is the month where all the Muslims get lazy. This is, you know, sadly a fact. And it's not that. On the contrary, mm-hmm. my dad, may his rest in peace, always taught us in Ramadan, you work the hardest out of the 11 months. And you use it as a kind of kind of push to everything good that you do, you kind of do it afterwards. It's not like charity or you give charity only at Ramadan and then after Ramadan, what happens? Right. Like, you know, end of May right now, you're going to stop giving charity because it's not Ramadan. That's not right. Ramadan is not that. Ramadan is a reminder, you know, like it's just a knock on the wood and the door. Hey, you could do this. You could start fresh, start new, get closer to God. That's all Ramadan. And and, 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 and yeah, you just feel, you should feel energized, you know? Um, you, you, and you get the regular headaches. Like, I have a headache right now just because I haven't eaten. Uh, but that's actually, okay. Actually, that's, that's you know? fluid. That's dehydration. That's, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. And yeah. it's not, you know. So, please, um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of restate it again. If you have any questions that don't matter, you're Muslim, non-Muslim, you're fasting, non-fasting, any question that I can think I can I can answer. Um, you know, what's Ramadan? What what happens in Ramadan? What happens after Ramadan? Why do people do Ramadan? These kind of questions like that will definitely answer. We have a hand raised. Go ahead, Anna. Thank you. Um, Has Dr. Has, 
Uh, yes. I have a Ramadan question. Yalla, okay. if I can answer. Um, what age do mm. children generally start? Yeah. When when would that happen in the family? It, it does, or it, encouraged to yeah. start fasting? But I, I was talking about that earlier. I was, it doesn't matter. Like, There's no specific age that children... Because ch- children are kind of exempted. Okay. So To the age of 18 or to the age of 16? That's what I'm saying. There's no specific age. Okay. Because I know some kids that fasted and they're 12. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like... It's, it's, My it's, son's I, got friends who are fasting it's how, and they're 14. It's how they're accustomed to and what they, they, they can start really, really young. Oh, okay. But chi- when you say a child, what's a child? Like, what's the age of a child? Children. A child, you know, I like, suppose, if, we, if we're talking commercially, yeah. um, it's Ten. always under 12, yeah. isn't it? That's so under 12, you're and not. And then, you, then you're into teen. Yeah. When you're like a teen, you could try fasting. Like, okay. I remember trying fasting when I was 13. How did know? it go? I was bad. Because I was it? fasting half a day. And then it was like, you know, going on. Okay. And, and then slowly, slowly, I couldn't, you know? And, right. and, and the week, on the weekends, I used to fast, I think, mm. because I used to sleep more and then stay uh, yeah. one hour okay hey dad i fast yay, yay. you know so yeah. it's, it's that but there's no specific one you know this is why you know we say allah is merciful because it's like you know if, if w- pregnant women yeah. breastfeeding women they're not obliged to yeah. um people who have health issues no like if you have health issues and you cannot fast and fasting will lead to something bad in your body you're exempted don't do okay. yeah don't do okay. it people who are traveling because back in the day they actually used to there was no planes there's no concord they used to travel yeah and via deserts and, oh, yeah. and so you're not you can't travel and fast obviously no. you know you gotta yeah. eat and all these things are stated okay. back in 1400 years ago you okay. know so um so these well, kind one of thing that's quite interesting is that for, for teens and for mm. children it will be harder yeah. than it is for you Fact. um mostly because of the way the metabolisms are yeah. so certainly i've got a 14 year old boy he's like an eating machine mm. um, and so f- to, to ask him to go more than two hours yeah. he, he gets Goes a bit crazy. weird and yeah. that's why they do it in steps my dad right. used to okay. do it in steps so for example you go to school you could fast in school right. until like let's say 2 or 2 30 p.m right. come back have lunch and see how your body goes okay and see test it okay. and then the next day increase an hour and the next like week it push it another hour okay and then you reach you reach oh. an age where you're you become an adult and it's compl- compulsory, you know, to uh, if you're able to, if you're healthy, everything is, you okay. know, it's, it's one of the pillars of Islam. Very, very important pillar as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope I'm asking these questions. If there's any scholar out there, you know, hit me up. I got but, yeah, go ahead. OK, so you talked about iftar. Iftar, uh, yeah. And then, and then is it suhoor? Yes. Okay, so iftar is where you, uh, that's the breakfast then. That's where, where we break, break our fast. Okay. Like this is, so for example, today it's at 6.40 p.m. This is the, 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 the maghrib time. This is where the sun sets. Yeah. Think about it, when the sun dawns, we, ha- we should stop eating yeah. until the sun sets. All this time, okay. which they're saying now 14 hours, yeah. you're not allowed to eat or drink. And I understand that bit. So then you said that you do it gently, you do fruits or you yes. do dates and yeah. water. And then, Much better. Are you right. Yeah. And is that just to give your body some time to s- sort of accustomize to the, oh, I c- I'm not fasting now? That's a very interesting question. You're going to need to ask more like a, a doctor about that. But like some people, sadly, they eat very heavy at night, like the, the, okay. the 3.30 or 4 just before... And I'm not what, I, in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Like the one, the the, the suhoor, the suhoor meal is is heavy. I'm not with that because obviously you're sleeping. You're gonna fall asleep, and that's not healthy anyway. Right. Ramadan or not Ramadan, regardless. Like you okay. don't eat a heavy one and then sleep, right? Like that's not. So what do you do then if you? Don't... For me, I drink a lot of water, yeah. and I had cucumber, tomato, stuff like that. You know, okay. apple, Lovely, uh, dates, a yeah. little bit of dates. I keep it light, but you just have to drink a lot of water. I drink but a lot then of water. Do you eat later on in the evening? Yeah, so what happens is that, yeah, of course. So okay. just before Fajr prayer, so just before the sun's dawn, you can okay. drink quick water. So that's why you see a lot of Muslims waking up in the morning, drinking, 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 drinking water. Okay. okay, now I'm done. And then, and then you okay. sleep or you will go, whatever it is, and you stay fasting until 6.40 p.m. Yeah. And 6.40 p.m., you can you, you can eat whatever you and want. And that's the iftar. And that's the iftar, you know. Okay. But again, technically speaking, it's very interesting because how we eat um, I'm, I'm very vocal about this because you can't stay also fasting the whole day and then eat the remaining of the night. That's not Ramadan as well. That's a very big mad conception. Oh, I, yeah, did, because, I thought you could. I thought no, 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 that's you what could, you could, but it's not like it's not healthy all for your body. Imagine you're like oh. you're kind of kind of not eating for like 14 hours and then eating for the remainder of 14. Yeah, hours. that's not right. But do you? Yeah. So I'm interested in when you actually eat properly. So if you just do cucumbers and tomatoes yeah. and fruits, I'm, at I'm, iftar, I'm on that since last when, night. Then Six, when? Then when? Six forty p.m. So today so 6:40 I have it. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. that's fine. Then when you have your real dinner. Yes. When? 6:40. So you have it then as well. Mm. So, so or do you just 
So do you just stick to cucumber, tomato and everything? Or are you going to have oh, something no, no. You bigger can eat, later on? Yeah, yeah, you can eat anything. So you are definitely bigger but later you, on. Though? At yeah, At night, like the one just before the sun dawns, the sun dawns I, I have a, a quick meal. At when, 6.40? Yes. Yeah, and Sorry, then the next uh, one? When the, the sun shines. You know, uh, at, at like morning. around 4, 4.30 a.m., you know, so like just just so you before eat the sun. nothing between the iftar and 4.40 a.m.? Yes. You eat nothing between else? Between suhoor and iftar, nothing. Wow. I, that's fasting. That's what you fast. No, that's during the day. I'm talking yeah. about at night. So what I'm, I'm seeing, ah. interested in seeing if you're actually having dinner at 9 p.m. or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah, After 6.40, you can eat whatever you want. But you said you didn't like to. I personally so. don't because like... So the you thing, don't eat then? No, it's not that. It's like a lot of people start keep eating. And, and, and it's not like it takes the whole essence of Ramadan. Like, okay, you're, you're fasting the whole day, but then you're eating the whole night. It, it, you know, you, you know, so like, you what you personally just do too. You do, do the iftar, and yeah. then at nine o'clock you'll have something. I else. eat regular. Like I'm just talking about the the, the what, what you bring. Like a lot of people would get like five six meals and eat and eat and keep eating yeah. like five six times from that six forty until then, and that's not right. And and again, mm-hmm. I know people do that. But the right way to do it is the moderation, you know, just okay. eat regularly. And that's what I do. So in the beginning, I when we when we break our fast, I eat something quick and then I pray and then I go back, eat my meal. Oh, okay. uh, that's the dinner. And, and then, what time would that be, the, eat the, the meal? The 6.40 p.m. you eat just to break your fast and then you go pray and then yeah. you come back, you eat your meal. And then what time's that one? It depends on the prayer. So after you finish your prayer around 7.10 or like 7.15. Okay. okay, so and still quite early. You eat, yeah, you eat that and then you can, you can, yeah, and you can eat. There's no harm in eating. I just... It's a personal perception about what Ramadan is all about. Yeah, no, know? I was it's, interested in what you. No, do no, no. I like that question because a lot of people would be like, "It's, it's so it's not cut off in 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 in, in pieces, in it's, sections." Yeah, okay. and you can eat anything you want. You can drink anything you want. Um, as Between long as it's sundown. Halal. And sunrise. Huh? Yeah, okay, exactly. Okay. That's the beauty of it. But see, these are the kind of questions, you guys. I love <laughs> I love, I love, love actually answering these questions. I mean, Anna, we've known each other for four years. This is the fourth Ramadan that we're spending together. Again, um, they're saying that around 14 hours and 44 minutes by the end of the month, we'll be fasting 48 degrees Celsius. Please be safe. Hi, um, yeah. And, and yeah, 48 degrees. We're like, yeah, full on. I'm telling you, you guys. <laughs> it's Yellow Home. It's Yellow Home. With Anna Schofield. And Big Hass. Driving you home across the UAE tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm sure the traffic's interesting. Hang in there, everyone. 5215, if you do have a question. I've got friends with questions. I can't believe they're not lining them up on the text line. We've had a few, but we answered them privately. If you have any questions, Big Hass is your guy. He's super good and um, treats everyone the same. Wonderful. All right, let's talk about Andrea Bocelli. Oh, of course. In Saudi Arabia. You know, he was in Saudi Arabia in Al-Ula, and um, uh, this is a quote from him. He's saying, Saudi Arabia is a land that never sees, uh, sees, sees ceases uh, yep. to amaze. Um, so he did this exclusive interview with the National. Shout out to the National with, um, you know, the sister Maria Mihal. And, uh, yeah, he spoke about, you know, how he actually paid tribute uh, to the country's heritage and, 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 and opens up about the joy of performing with his kids on stage because his children was there. Matteo was mm-hmm. there. Uh, I think his daughter was there as well. Uh, he was talking about, uh, he's 62 years old, Bocelli. And uh, wow. Al-Ula is... Um, is he's saying it's paradise, it's overwhelming beauty, and it's a fact. I mean, with LeBron James, DJ Khaled have spoken about it, Ula, and they posted about it on their story, and no one paid them to do so. Right. Because a lot of people were like, hey, why is LeBron James talking about it? Maybe because it's beautiful, maybe because <laughs> that's not money, it doesn't always talk all the time. I but why wouldn't LeBron James do that? But anyway, um, Andre Bocelli said, and it's not surprising that it's recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And he, and he, he saw it, and he just really really loved it and he said i'm proud to have once again uh lent my voice to an evening that ideally involved east and west in a great embrace uh, and of course if you know anything about andrea bocelli you know that this is his music um he actually described the region's desert as a rugged and dazzling beauty adding he and his family fell in love with 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 saudi arabia he said it's a land that never ceases to amaze us from the refinement of the food to the depth of its artistic and cultural uh, heritage and I love that because the people who are look my friend of mine Sosan she is uh, the, the first lady um, in Saudi who sings opera and she met him and she so when when these big stars come UAE need to learn from Saudi Arabia with that matter um, with that being said like when all these stars come in 
there's a lot of these stars that meet local uh, uh, artists, local talents. In Saudi, Not, this yeah, is. in Saudi. Yeah, great. Not only come in here, visit the, the tallest building in the world, and ha- have have a visit at the desert and feed a couple of monkeys, and then that's it. <laughs> Watch a falcon than, fly. No, yeah, we're bigger <laughs> than that. No, seriously, we're bigger yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah. And I know, they, I know from a friend of mine, like a couple of DJs. Um, I think it was Geta and, and another one. They signed this on the deal. Mm. Signing meaning like. I signed, I, they got paid maybe to see uh, local artists meet with them, speak to them, and, and just engage with them, which is just really um, interesting. So in that point, I really hope that the UAE um, kind of get inspired from that. I know Saudi Arabia is still kind of new with the entertainment, but you know the UAE is a hub for all these incredible stars that come in. How many stars come in here? Imagine none of these stars meet the artist. None of the artists, none of the people... None of these stars meet the people and go down. They always go to fancy places and and to places that everyone visit because that's, you know, it. But I just think it's amazing to see that. And Andrea Bocelli is talking about that. He's saying, I'm returning to Italy and I'm carrying with me the memory of one of the most um, evocative evocative places in the world, which is incredible. Evocative, yeah, absolutely. But singing with his nine-year-old girl was um, properly beautiful. And he Mm. sang Leonard Cohen's Alleluia. Um, that's what they sung together while they're on stage. Mm. His daughter's nine, and she's called Virginia. Um, yeah, just it's a lovely, lovely thing. But I mean, he's gone before and he's talked about how much he loved it and the rugged beauty. And um, he also has said that his family's in love with Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So when he goes there now, he takes they all go. It's like one in, all in. He takes his whole family. So lovely, yeah. really nice. And he 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 said, "I dream for our children and for future generation a, a planet without wars, uh, where good wins over evil." And despite everything, I remain optimistic. In spite of all those who do not pursue the good, the wor- or pursue the good, the world is getting better, and people of goodwill are more and more. Inshallah, nice. I really, yeah. I really, I really hope, I really hope that's the case, because um, you know the world is uh, sometimes a tough place um, to be in. Um, we're gonna be right back. It's Yellow Home. It's Yellow Home with Anna Schofield and Big Hass. And it's 10 to 6. I always jump in earlier. Jump in way too early. It's your new intro, (laughs) Anna. I know, yeah, but it's, it's not what I'm let's, used let's to. Let's try again here. One okay. more. Let's try. Okay. This is only okay. practice. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yalla. Okay. Yalla. One, two, three. Mm. It's Yalla Home. Okay. Yalla Home. With Anna Schofield. Yeah. And Big Hass. Pulse. Ayo. Okay. Okay. We have a pulse. All right. Got it. Got it. I'll wait for the breathy pulse and I'm in. Uh, we are heading for 10 to 6. And as I was just saying, not long now, guys. Not long. Yes. 421. <laughs> Five, less than an hour message. just less less than, less than an hour and just before we let you guys go uh, the figures are today for the Ministry of Health and Prevention just announced 13th of April 2022 cases um, so I want to try to monitor how, how it is in Ramadan so we're, we're monitoring right now 2022 is the first day of Ramadan of course we know that COVID takes about two weeks so I'm hoping by mid of Ramadan which is in two weeks from now, that figures will be dropping mm. in, in a big way. Like yeah. we're going to be less than a thousand. I just hope so. I'm just saying. I hope so. So uh, let's see how that goes. So the ministry announced today, 2022, 266,000 plus tests been done in the past 24 hours. Um, that's also a big drop. I think maybe people will take less daily tests, uh, which is also interesting since it's Ramadan. Maybe, I don't know. 1,731 people recovered from COVID-19. Um, and we are approaching that big number 500,000 we are at 487,000 plus people uh, who have actually been affected with COVID-19. There's so many isn't it? Um, Let's just look around the world and uh, find out what the global headlines are doing on this momentous day and we've got the the WHO your favourite people has calling Mm. for a ban on the sale of live wild mammals in food markets which I am wholly behind because that's one of the reasons we're all here Um, Japan have you heard about this? I Mm. mean talk about um, climate and environment and then cut to this headline get a load of this Japan is about to release more than 1 million tons of radioactive mm. stuff into the sea wow yeah it's just going to do it uh, interesting um, in Can't the UK you Japan. yeah thank you for that and over at Europe um, they're saying that the COVID deaths before um, the last break the summer break are the lowest in six months not the summer break the Easter break we've just had um the before the before that, that's the lowest level in six months. So they are celebrating. Um, they're saying it, it really is a, an amazing thing. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking around. Nothing else that I really want to touch on. Um, 
Millions of people have, have, have traveled to celebrate religious festivals, especially from India, and they're, they're basically saying coronavirus is not going to stop us. Mm. And that is it, really. That's the, uh, wow. that's the global look. Yeah, that is definitely there. I, I just want to say, just to document this, you know, obviously, moment, first day of Ramadan, I think, uh, I, I think I'm doing well. Uh, one hour minus. You do seem it, I um, have to say. You yeah, are peppy you're, pee. You're yeah, which is poignant. interesting. Is yeah. it adrenaline? It must I, be. To be honest with you, I started the show, yeah, like that, but right now, I am definitely, like, I have... Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm worried down. And that's normal, I guess. You haven't eaten since, like, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, or had and a drink. Nothing, yeah, yeah. No drink, no nothing, which is... <laughs> that. That's where these last 10 minutes, this is where the test is. Okay. The te- this is where Will you drive safely, This is where the, the temptations come in, in. This is where, like, you see, oh, hey, uh, you, there's two more minutes. Two more minutes. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. do it. Because it's, if yeah. you eat before, <laughs> like you, two you still hours. haven't fasted. <laughs> right. uh, everything oh. that you've done has gone right. to waste. Oh, so, <laughs> so first of all, don't do that. Second of all, um, it's okay to feel you're not okay. Like, it's okay. Like, if you're, you know, uh, right. because it's tiring, especially the first week, three, four days, it's okay. Uh, third of all, really, I want to hear from you guys tomorrow, especially, to be honest, the, the people who are not fasting, the non-Muslims. If you listen to us, please consider us and consider me like um, some sort of a, um, a safe, definitely ground to say anything you want. Yes. You can text us. Don't mention your name. And I won't mention your name. Won't mention your number. Won't call you. Don't worry. Won't do anything. I just want to hear from you. 4215, it's a lot to undo. Uh, that's tomorrow. Brilliant. want to remind the people for uh, the evening karak, you guys. They're going to be taking over. Uh, of course, 8 p.m., 8 to 10 p.m. And I heard they're going to be giving away 500 dirham cash. Yep, cash bundles the, right here. Double R is that, right? Huh? Double R? Oh, we got Ray it's as well. A, it's we got, a bit late we got to check. The, 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 the double team is here. Oh, the taxi. Ray and Double R are here, which is fantastic. I love it when they're here. <laughs> when both of them are here, it's over. No, we'll yeah, it normally best. means we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. No, Ray Ray doesn't do anything. It's Double R there. <laughs> Look at What do you mean? <laughs> Oh, wow. My head's Yalla. spinning off right yeah. now. If you liked this episode of Yalla Home, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.